Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is logarithmic differentiation. For some of you, you've never heard of it. For some of you, you already know what it's about but you don't know how well you can use it. Um, this video is going to help you see when you need to use it and when you may use it. So let me just make things clear from the beginning. Okay. Now, there are some differentiations you cannot do without logarithmic differentiation, and this is an example. Now, you can differentiate this using quotient rule. You can use quotient rule here too, quotient plus product rule, and you get your answer. Well, it might be not as easy as if you use logarithmic differentiation. Okay, but for number one, there is no other way because if you try to do um, chain rule here, you can't use chain rule because this is not a constant. It's another variable. It's a function on its own. So when your exponent is a function on its own, there's nothing you can do. You just have to bring it down so you can use product rule. And the best way to bring down an exponent is to introduce logarithms. Okay, now what kind of logarithm should you use? Well, it's always natural logarithm because that's the only thing we have learned how to differentiate. You don't know how to differentiate any logarithmic function if it is log to base 4 or log to base 11 or base square root of 2. Well, you can if you now start converting again to natural log. So just straight ahead, follow these steps and you'll be fine. Let me just read out the steps to you. The first thing you want to do when you get a function where the power is a function on its own, because you can't use the power rule in this case, what you have to do is take the natural log of both sides. Okay, you do that. The next thing is use the logarithm properties that you know to simplify. After that, you have to now differentiate both sides because you have to use implicit differentiation. And finally, isolate your y prime and whatever is on the other side is your answer. However, do not leave your answer containing anything other than x since all of these are written in terms of x so it means that y that you had at the beginning uh, will have to be replaced with the original function remember you're going to get y as part of your answer but you don't want to leave y there you want to replace it with the function you had at the beginning so in in each case you're going to have these coming back at the end of the function it's a lot easier than the story i just told you let's get into the video the first question is on the board and we're going to follow the steps because this is not a constant, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x squared plus 3 to the x. What shall I do? Well, I can bring this down. That's what you mean by properties of logarithms. That's the second step. Now we're going to use the log properties to simplify. One property I know is that this power can come all the way down here. And then you're going to have x ln of x squared plus 3. That's what we have here as ln y. Now that there's no further simplification I can do based on the log properties that I know, I can now use the third step, which is to use implicit differentiation. Well, I'm gonna differentiate the left, differentiate the right. Now, this is how I like to differentiate any natural log function. I'm gonna tell myself that the derivative of what I'm looking at is the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. Well, the derivative of this argument is y prime. What is the argument itself? It's y. Okay, I'm done with the left-hand side. I go to the right-hand side. Well, I have to use the product rule, okay? So, if I use the product rule, what do I get? I'm gonna differentiate the first. I'm gonna get one. And then I keep the second. That's natural log of x squared plus three. Plus, I'm gonna keep the first and differentiate the second. If I differentiate the second, it's the same thing I did here. What is the derivative of the argument? The derivative of this argument is 2x divided by the argument itself, x squared plus 3. That's how you take the derivative of all natural log functions, okay? Easy. <laughs> okay, now in this case, this is going to be ln of x squared plus 3 plus this is going to be x times 2x. That's going to be 2x squared over x squared plus 3. Huh. Looks like the job is done because what I have here is just y prime over y. Well, if I want to isolate just y, I can say y prime. If I multiply both sides by y, I can just multiply this 
by y, okay? Or what people say, you cross multiply. So now I have my y prime isolated. This y has multiplied this side. Well, the last step is to replace the y with the original function. What was the original function? This guy. So I'm gonna go here and say, this is equal to the natural log of x squared plus three plus 2x squared over x squared plus 3, well, everything is now multiplied by a function sitting next to it, and that function is x squared plus 3 to the x. That is y prime. I have successfully taken the derivative of this function, and it's clean. There is no other way that I know. Maybe there's some other strange way, but not in calculus one. <laughs> and not in calculus two either. Okay. For someone who is so used to implicit differentiation, I would always want to do logarithmic differentiation. But for someone who likes to use um, the quotient rule, well, once you see this problem, you just go ahead and do quotient rule. But let's see what it will look like if we apply these steps to this problem, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, let's take the natural log of both sides. So we're gonna say ln of y is equal to the natural log of this fraction, which is gonna be 2x plus three over x squared plus x plus one to the fifth. Okay, that's what we've got. I'm gonna put this in parentheses. Okay, now something we need to remember is that the natural log of a over b is the same thing as the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. Do you remember this? Because that's from your pre-calculus class or algebra two or college algebra, whichever one you took, you must have learned this when you learned logarithms. This is one of the, I think it's the second, or oh, one of the basic laws of logarithms that when you have a fraction, it means it's the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. So now I'm going to simplify. It's going to be the natural log of y will be equal to the natural log of 2x plus 3 minus the natural log of x squared plus x plus 1 to the fifth power. Well, we're not done simplifying because this exponent can actually come down here based on another law of logarithm, which tells us that the logarithm of b to the third is the same thing as 3 log b, if you remember this. So now I can say that ln y is equal to ln 2x plus 3 minus, if I bring this 5 down, it's going to be 5 ln of x squared plus x plus 1. So this is so easy because I can easily take the derivative of everything that I see implicitly. So let's take the derivative of this by um, implicit differentiation. I'm going to have, remember, is the derivative of the argument over the argument. So it's going to be y prime over y is equal to the derivative of the argument over the argument. This is going to be 2x over 2x plus 3 and minus 5 times the derivative of the argument over the argument. What's the derivative of the argument? It's going to be 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so that's what I've got. Well, let's clean this up. Well, I'm going to do two things at the same time. I am going to simplify this, not simplify, I'm just going to multiply this out, and then I'm going to multiply by y, which is going to be equal to um, 2x. And I'm going to isolate y prime. So three things at the same time. Remember, this y goes all the way here to multiply. So we're going to have 2x over 2x plus 3 minus, if I multiply this out, it's going to be, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to leave it as um, 5 into 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, um, that's going to be y prime, but this y goes all the way and multiplies this side, okay, by y, okay, and that's what we've got. Well, instead of writing y, remember the last step tells you you have to replace y with the original function. So I'm gonna go here and erase this and replace it with the original function, which is this. So I put it in parentheses on the outside here. I'm gonna use a, a square parenthesis also. And then I'm gonna write that. This is gonna be 2x plus three 
divided by x squared plus x plus 1 to the fifth. Now, I know some of you might be saying, yeah, I would rather just use um, the quotient rule. Well, you might say that in this case. When it gets more complicated, this becomes the better option using logarithmic differentiation. It's a lot easier. Let's go to the third question. Okay, let's just go straight into the third one and see what we get. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. and It's going to be the natural log of this function, which is x cubed plus 1 to the fourth sine. I'm going to write sine squared x as sine x squared. Okay, so it's easy for us to apply the laws we want to apply. And this is going to be x to the 1 third. Well, I'm going to extend this here so I can have enough space. This is the same thing as um, the natural log of x cubed plus 1 to the fourth plus the natural log of sine x squared minus the natural log of x to the one-third. Okay, that's what this is going to look like. So let's make it smooth on this side. So we're going to say ln of y will be equal to, if I rewrite this, it's going to be 4 ln of x cubed plus 1 plus 2 ln of sine x minus 1 third ln of x. Ah, simplified, easy to differentiate now, implicit differentiation. Remember, it's y prime over y, which will now be 4 multiplied by, what's the derivative of what is inside? It is 3x squared over what is inside, which is x cubed plus 1. Plus 2, the derivative of what is inside is cosine x divided by what is inside, sine x, minus 1 over 3 times derivative of what, what is inside is 1 divided by what is inside, that's x. So now, let's clean this up. This is going to be equal to 12x squared over x cubed plus 1 plus 2 well cosine x over sine x is the reciprocal of 10x which is cotangent x so I'm going to write 2 co in fact I want to bring this closer first so let me bring this here so 1 third times 1 over x is going to be minus let's clean this up so it's going to be minus 1 over 3x and then plus 2 cotangent of x. Okay, and that's y prime over y. So I can now multiply both sides by y, so I can get rid of this y and isolate y prime. So y prime will now be equal to this multiplied by y, which is going to be 12x squared over x cubed plus 1 minus 1 over 3x plus 2 cotangent x um, all multiplied by y but I'm not going to write y I want to go back and write what y was from the beginning that's the last step right here so I'm going to make another box here that's fact multiplying it which will now be x cubed plus 1 to the fourth sine squared x divided by x to the one-third. Now, if you do this using the quotient rule, I need you to leave a comment in the comment section and tell me which method you would prefer. Quotient rule or the logarithmic rule, um, logarithmic differentiation. This is quite easy for me. I'm not confused about anything. Quotient rule could be nasty sometimes. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, subscribe today. And leave a comment because that helps the YouTube algorithm to recommend the video to other people. See you in the next video. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning, stop living.
Bye-bye.